Hello. Uh, in this in this video, I'm going to talk about this, uh, the synthesis of simple symmetric ethers, uh, because these kinds of compounds can be uh, prepared using a type of reaction that's not going to work for most other ethers. Uh, and as an example, I'm going to end up using a compound that is used by most folks uh, in this example, and that's diethyl ether. Diethyl ether is an incredibly common organic solvent, so much so that it's referred to by this common sounding name, diethyl ether, instead of its more proper ethoxyethane name. In fact, diethyl ether is so important as an ether solvent that sometimes when you just see the word ether, people are referring to this specific compound. Industrially, diethyl ether is prepared from the reaction uh, of ethanol under certain kinds of acidic conditions. Here. Um, And, and the acid, and an acid, and a favorite acid of everybody's uh, in this particular acid, this reaction is sulfuric acid. Um, some folks will tell you that this kind of happens at low temperatures because at high temperatures there's an elimination process that can take over. Uh, I will say that in industrially, it's probably done in such a way that it, it just favors the equilibrium of diethyl ether. So if it's done at a temperature at which diethyl ether evaporates uh, and ethanol does not, then uh, diethyl ether can be distilled as it forms and the equilibrium continues to shift towards making more diethyl ether. Uh, in this reaction, we have our, uh, we have a molecule of alcohol that can react with the acid in a proton transfer step. Uh, this activates the alcohol functional group there to be a better leaving group. Uh, this is something we, we do frequently. And then along comes another molecule of alcohol that can act as a nucleophile and displace the, the H2O group. And that generates a protonated ether, and then that protonated ether can lose uh, its proton. And I'm going to have uh, another molecule of ethanol come along and grab that proton uh, because ultimately we need more, the, the mechanism requires more protonated methanol to continue along. And uh, the ethanol is really the only thing else in the reaction that can act as a, a, as a base. So this is how this reaction works. It has its limitations. Uh, and I'm just going to share two of them with you. Uh, one, one really important limitation is that if this is done on a reaction on a tertiary alcohol, even though uh, it might be kept cold to try to avoid uh, elimination, under these cir certain circumstances it's going to be hard to avoid the, the SN1 reaction. Uh, especially when the nucleophile is also a tertiary thing. Uh, another limitation has to do with if we wanted to prepare a, a non-symmetric ether, so like an ethyl group on one side and a propyl group on the other, we might be tempted to think that that would work just by reacting ethanol and propanol under these conditions. Uh, <clears throat> however, 
under these conditions, there's nothing that controls which alcohol is going to become the nucleophile and which alcohol becomes the electrophile. And so, in fact, you get all possible combinations and permutations of diethyl ether, dipropyl ether, and ethyl propyl ether. In the next video, I'm going to cover a way that uh, a reaction that can uh, overcome this particular hurdle. And, and then in the following video, I'll describe a way where we, where we can make ethers using uh, at uh, highly substituted positions. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.